Okay, let's talk about the NBA draft because we're going to tie this in to Texas Tech in the roster that the Red Raiders currently have because I think that there's two guys on the roster going into 2024, 2025 that could be drafted, right? But let's start with guys that were previously Red Raider, right? And where they got drafted. We're going to start in the first round, and it's going to be with Jalen Tyson getting drafted 20th overall to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Good for JT, man. Um, then you've got Terrence Shannon Jr., TJ. He goes number 27 overall to the Minnesota Timberwolves, okay? That's pretty good stuff right there. There's a lot of what ifs, but now we transition to the 2024 2025 roster for Texas Tech. Because to me, you have two guys that I could see get drafted. Okay. Now, one far more than the other, and that's not disrespect to the other. Um, it's just, well, look at what they have in terms of mock drafts and the people that are making these decisions perceived him as. And it's JT Toppin. JT Toppin, in my opinion, if he increases the frequency of the threes that he takes in terms of, you know, how many he takes and he still shoots around 35%, which he did as a true freshman out at New Mexico, I could see Toppin being a top 20 pick in the 2025 NBA draft. And oh, by the way, everybody's talking about how bad the 2024 draft is. The 2025 draft is the polar opposite, a full swing to the other side, talking about a generational draft. That's how people are perceiving it. And JT Toppin is squarely in the mix to be a first round pick. Now, when you look at everything in terms of these major media sites and where do they have way too early projections for the new Texas Tech, either starting four or five, depending on the lineup in JT Toppin, you're going to like what you hear, Red Raider Nation, because CBS Sports has JT Toppin projected as the 18th pick in the 2025 NBA draft. We're not done there yet, though. NBA Draft Room, one of the most highly accredited sites when it comes to NBA mock drafts and being right more often than not, has the newest Red Raider projected as the 24th overall pick in the 2025 NBA draft. Now, when it comes to Darion Williams, he is the other in this situation. And D5 is super interesting to me from the sheer standpoint of this, does he have the prototypical NBA body? I think if you said yes, you're probably lying to yourself. But does he have the skills and the skill set to thrive in the NBA and be a guy that I think could play in the league for a little bit? Absolutely. It's just what is he? I think that that's the biggest thing, right? Because he's kind of a tweener. Or is he more of a guard? Is he more of a forward because of how much he weighs? Like, where do you go with him? That being said, I have seen multiple two-round mock drafts having D5 being drafted either like 59th, 58th, or just not drafted at all, but being a primary guy in terms of the next up in terms of the top 60. So there's that. But from a JT Toppin perspective, I think you're talking about the neighborhood that you saw Jalen Tyson get drafted this year in the 2024 draft as the 20th overall pick by the Cleveland Cavaliers. It would not shock me whatsoever if JT Toppin is one and done at Texas Tech. In fact, that's kind of how I'm going into this season in terms of what he's going to be. You think about what he did at New Mexico, winning Mountain West Freshman of the Year, led that conference in rebounding, block shots as a freshman, and field goal percentage. Remember, a top 20 field goal percentage all time by a true freshman. All time in NCAA tournament history. Now, He's coming into Lubbock, and he has a chance to be either the starting four or five, depending on how Grant McCaslin wants to finagle the lineup in terms of going smaller with Fetty coming off the bench, or is Federico the starting five, and JT can actually space the floor a little bit more and show NBA scouts, hey, I have worked on developing my game. I have worked on my outside shooting and being more consistent with it and taking more of them per game. I think that that's probably the more likely scenario, JT top and starting at the four. That being said, it can't go understated the fact that Texas Tech landed a guy in the portal late in the process, I might add, in terms of the NBA draft process being over with. That's being projected, and again, 
I get it. It's way too early for the 2025 NBA draft. Right now, the NBA draft is currently going on at the time of this live stream. But he's being projected as a top 25 pick. That's a guy that has the chance to be really an all Big 12 first team, second team type guy. There is real NBA impact potential there for Texas Tech. And now you start thinking about that in terms of how does he elevate others, okay? How does he make life easier for D5? I think that that's a very fair question, and I think he makes his life a lot easier if we're being honest about it. But from the NBA draft process perspective, you want to see JT Toppin shoot more threes, and that is going to help guys like D5. That's going to help guys like Elijah Hawkins because there's going to be more pressure on JT Toppin from the perspective of the defense. And NBA scouts, when he was at the combine, he stood out. Like, did he struggle sometimes? Yes, but his motor, his rebounding ability for his size, and he shot better than a lot of people expected, I think. Now, he's got to vastly improve in that because he is kind of a tweener as well. I've compared him to Nick Claxton, a smaller version, a guy that just got a four-year, $100 million contract from the Brooklyn Nets. I think he's probably more of a wing version of that. But I'm telling you right now, if JT Toppin can average, let's say, two and a half threes per game, and he makes, oh, I don't know, 35% of them, he's going to get drafted in the top 20 next year in a loaded draft class, okay? Just absolutely loaded draft class. He's one of those guys that NBA draft, you know, scouts and guys that make mock drafts are going to fall in love with if he can do that. And now he's the starting four or five for the Red Raiders. And a guy that when I look at his film, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if he can do this, because the, the rebounding is not going to go away. He's still an elite rebounder. He's going to be really good in the pick and roll. But I think the thing that I'm most interested to see, and I think a skill set that a lot of Texas Tech fans don't know where he's going to be at once the season comes around. Yeah, he's good in the pick and roll, but what about the pick and pop? I think that that's where that could be the ultimate game changer offensively for the Red Raiders because if you make the defense come out and respect JT Toppin shooting the three, think about the lanes that that opens up for guys like Chance McMillan, D5, Kerwin Walton, Devin Cambridge. I mean, the list goes on and on in terms of cutters that Texas Tech has that can finish through contact. So that's really what I'm looking at. And the NBA scouts are taking notice as well. They talked about his rebounding. In these mock drafts, they talked about how efficient he was as a shooter close to the rim. But the big overarching theme for them is how good does his shot look as a sophomore in an elevated conference in the Big 12? Don't listen to those New Mexico people saying this is a lateral move for JT Toppin. That's one of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard. Um, if you really think the Mountain West Conference is the same as the Big 12, I don't know what conference you're watching or what you're doing in your life outside of watching basketball, but you're wrong. Um, you're wrong. It's that simple.